What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, thanks for tuning in. Today we have a very, very exciting video for you guys. The day has finally come. The new KC Turbo is going in the truck. Um, on top of that, it is an absolutely gorgeous day out here, uh, which is a very nice change of pace from the dark, dreary rain that we've been having. So I have a feeling today is going to be a good day. Uh, the truck is loaded down with all the different parts and pieces for the turbo install. We got a box over there. We got some boxes and the turbo in the back. We're headed over to the shop right now. I figured I'd give you guys a little bit of an intro uh, to start the video off before we get there. If you're new here, I guess I'll give you a little bit of a rundown. We're installing a new KC Turbo 6368.84 housing. Uh, KC 300X turbo on the truck along with that we have all new uh, intercooler boots from Riff Raff. We got the Riff Raff boost cooler. Uh, we're doing a pusher intake system on the truck all new intercooler piping um, Riff Raff plenum inserts I think that's about it. I'm sure I'm probably missing something uh, but the whole truck's getting the full shebang um, It should be a pretty uh, full day, but a pretty exciting day. Um, I think the truck is going to be a whole different animal next time I drive it. Um, so I think for the most part, this video is probably going to be more of just taking you guys along in the process. It's not necessarily going to be a long how to install a turbo video. The video is probably going to be long enough already, so I don't think we need the whole the how to steps. Um, I might show you guys once we get it all laid out on a table, show you guys the full shindig that's going in the truck. It's a uh, pretty glorious sight to see. Uh, I did a reveal in the last video of all the new powder coated parts. Got them powder coated a nice pretty candy red or a cherry red. Um, it looks pretty freaking sexy. So I might show you guys that once we get it all laid out on the table. But if not, you're going to see it anyways. So I think I'll probably end this here and we're going to go straight to work. guys we have it all taken apart at this point I didn't like I said I didn't show you a step-by-step -step of how to do it all there's a lot of videos on how to do that and they'll probably do a better job explaining it than I will but give you guys an update on where we're at obviously you got the turbo out you got the clamp back there for the up pipes you got your clamp back down there for the down pipes I would recommend whether this is your first time doing it or not is spray some oil or penetrating oil back on that back cl clamp if you can do it for the days leading up to it, especially if it's never been off before, do that. You're gonna save yourself a lot of time. Uh, thankfully, I actually had this turbo out last year, so taking that, that clamp off the back wasn't nearly as bad. It probably took three hours the first time, about 45 minutes this time. Um, it's just tight, and again, it gets welded on there based on all the heat cycles. Um, so what do we have next coming from here? You can see the rags that we have stuffed down in the intakes. What I'll be doing is putting the riffraff intake reinforcements in there, and I'll show you guys that. I, I guess going forward from here, uh, what I plan to be doing is actually showing you what's going on and what's changing. So we'll be going riffraff intake inserts or reinforcements into those plenums uh, so you can actually clamp down on them and they don't break or bend. And then we'll probably be reversing the doghouse for the there it is, reversing the doghouse for the crankcase vent. So that come, the vent comes out the rear now. Um, and then 
Ideally, I'm going to be doing a catch can on it. Um, I haven't quite figured out how I want to do that yet. I was thinking mount it from those two points, but again, not positive. At least going through and resealing that. And then going on from there, it's basically uh, putting things back together at this point. So it's probably clean up the valley a little bit. Uh, people always ask me how I keep my engine so clean, especially on these 7.3s. Um, there's a dirty little secret that I'll give to you guys. And the secret is to clean it as you're working on it. That's it. That's all it takes. Uh, it's not fun to do, but as you're working on it, uh, go through and clean it and uh, just take your time and do that. And it makes your life a hell of a lot easier going down the road when you're working on those parts later. Um, so yeah, there you go. I think we're going to be putting in those inserts or cleaning up, putting in those inserts, moving on to the doghouse. And then the new turbo should be going in. I will update you guys a little bit later. All right, here you go, guys. We're getting ready to put the inserts into the plenums right here. And this is what they look like from Riff Raff. You kind of, it's, I believe it's machined aluminum that is tapered down on the bottom so it can just slide down onto the inserts. And then you basically just tap them into place. And that is what kind of solidifies up the plenum so you can really clamp down on it and you don't have to worry about crushing the intakes. So just figured I'd show you these outside of the intakes because you can't really see them once they're in. So we're gonna throw these in the truck and uh, move on to the crankcase vent. Here we go. As you saw, we got the plenum inserts in the truck. We got the crankcase house or crankcase housing switched around to face the rear, uh, which is a pretty common way to do it. And as you can see now, it is time for the turbo. If you haven't seen the turbo in any of my previous videos, and this is the first video you're watching, um, I did get it powder coated. Uh, it is a KC turbo, 63, 68.84 housing, like I said. And it is a beauty. Um, it should light really, really quickly with the injectors I have in this truck. Um, so now the challenge is going to be getting all the powder coated parts in the truck without scratching them. Uh, for those of you that worked on these 7.3s, you know it's a pretty tight fit. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Hopefully, cross your fingers. Um, basically, it's all pretty straightforward from here, putting stuff back together. Um, yeah, so we're going to throw it in the truck. I just figured I'd give you guys a little bit of a look around one last time outside of the truck so you could see just how pretty it actually is because this is the last time we'll get the good view of the turbo oh i should mention that i did test this wastegate pressure and i think i have it set to open right around 30 to 35 psi so i should be within the safe range while still being able to push some good numbers now that's it 
Time to put the turbo in the truck. All right, guys, we're here probably two or three hours later. Turbo gave us a little bit of issues getting on. Um, not really unexpected. You just kind of got to wrestle with it and fiddle with all the crap going on to it. Um, putting on the new intake for the turbo. Um, like I said, I'm going to be deleting the crankcase vent going into the, uh, into the intake pipe. And so inside your turbo or inside your intake, you'll see this little um, oil spout or it'll be a vapor spout with a bunch of oil around it. This faces your turbo and that's where your crankcase vents out of from your doghouse. And so I just figured I'd show you that I just ended up getting a little rubber plug that slips over um, the lip and then on the inside I'll show you what we did routing the actual crankcase. Um, just did the standard CCV mod that you can look up online um, I'm going to worry about doing the catch can later when all said and done and I can see where to mount it uh, But let me show you guys that all right. So here you guys go. We got the turbo in back there This is the new silicone boot that comes with it. You can see the uh, Turbine right in there or the compressor right in there uh, The doghouse for the CCV is right there as you saw we flipped it around and we have the kind of the standard CCV mod three-quarter inch line going up over the brake master cylinder and then route it under the truck. So that's pretty. That's basically the typical CCV mod that you guys see or can look up online. Um, that's the simpler mod to do right now. I'll worry about the catch can later if this bothers me. Uh, but I figured I'd show you that um, just because you won't be able to see it once it's all put together. Alrighty guys, as you can probably tell, it is a whole another day from all the last clips that you just saw. Uh, the turbo actually went in the truck a week ago, last Saturday. Today is the current next Saturday after the install. So that means I have about a week of driving on the turbo and it's time to give you guys an update on what I think about it so far, show you the final results, what it looks like, all its sexy goodness sitting there under the hood of the truck. So why is it a week after the install of the turbo that I'm finally getting to film this? So we actually finished up the turbo install at about one, one in the morning. And to be completely honest, everybody was exhausted. I was exhausted. I couldn't even hardly stand anymore. I'd been on my feet so long that my legs were just shot. So at 1 a.m., I wasn't really feeling like uh, doing a whole review of the turbo. I was ready to go home and go to bed. Um, and so after that, I had to go to work. I'm working every day, and it's dark by the time I get home. So now is the next time I am able to actually uh, do the next part of the video which actually works out pretty well because that means I have a week of driving on the new turbo to give you a better idea of what I feel like feel about it so far I did film the first startup for you guys so I will pop that clip in here in a second um, I didn't want to miss that first startup just so you guys could hear it it's kind of a monumental moment of when you do a truck mod that big um, getting the first startup is always fun so I did film that for you guys I have to say it does sound pretty sweet if you pay attention you guys should be able to hear the turbo give it a nice little spool on startup so I'll put that clip in right here <laughs> There you go. That's the first startup at one in the morning. Um, I don't know about you guys, but hearing that little turbo spool sounded freaking awesome to me. Maybe it's that I had just been working on it for 12 hours and to hear it sounded a whole lot better, but I think it sounded pretty darn sweet. No, it's nothing crazy. It's not like a VGT turbo on the newer trucks that just scream on startup, but uh, I think it's got a pretty good sound to it. For those of you that know 7.3s, um, you'd probably be able to recognize that that's not a stock truck when it starts up anymore. Um, so that's kind of fun. Ran into a couple other issues. I'm gonna hop up under the hood and actually show you guys uh, some of the issues we talked about. And of course, show you the final results of what it actually looks like because it's pretty darn sweet. 
So let's hop up under the hood. So there you guys go. You're going to have to let me know what you think. I think it turned out pretty freaking sexy. Uh, I think the red in there just looks awesome. Of course, now some of the not so clean parts around the engine bay look a little dirtier. Uh, so maybe I'm going to have to do a little more cleaning in here now. Uh, but overall, I think it turned out beautiful. See the turbo back in there, sitting there all nice and pretty. Got the pusher intake, the new intercooler piping from Riff Raff, uh, the boost fooler from Riff Raff. Of course, all new boots from Riff Raff. Um, she's sitting pretty clean under the hood now. Um, overall, turned out awesome. So what are a couple issues we ran into? I want to let you guys know this because I know a lot of people were looking at running similar setups and I want you guys to be aware of some issues. So, I'm going to start by saying none of them were detrimental issues. Um, it was just some stuff we had to work around. Uh, kind of one of those things when you're working with uh, different companies' parts, you got to figure things out because they weren't exactly, because they weren't exactly designed to work with each other. So, one issue that we had was that, I'd say probably the main issue we had was actually installing the pusher intake system. As you guys saw, we had the riffraff plenum inserts or reinforcements put into the plenums to stiffen them up so we could really clamp down tight on them. And I'll say they fit perfectly. They snug, they slid in real snug. Uh, we didn't have to hammer them too hard. We just tapped them on in. Um, they look good, fit good, no complaints about that. But an issue we ran into was from pusher intakes, they recommend having a real small air gap between your Y pipe and your compressed or your hot side pipe. As you can see, we do have a small gap there between the two. The issue we ran into was the pipes were rubbing up against each other. They were pressed up against each other and I didn't want them to be vibrating ever so slightly and slowly rubbing into each other. So we had to figure out how to um, get that gap in there. Now I think the conclusion we kind of came up to was the problem we had was the riffraff plenum inserts sit above the plenum about an eighth of an inch, maybe less. Um, we think the problem was it was actually making this Y pipe on the left sit up higher ever so slightly and it was up against each other. So what we ended up actually doing was grinding down the end of this Y pipe, the passenger side, about an eighth of an inch so that way it could sit down in the boot farther and angle it to the side so that way we came up with the gap right there um, i did take a short clip of it so i'll show you guys that now And there you go. So you can kind of see what we did. We just took a grinder or a flat disc grinder and shaved down about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little less on that left uh, passenger side Y of the pipe. And once we did that, that slid in just a little bit farther and uh, gave us the gap we needed, the air gap. Um, wasn't a huge issue, just took some problem solving. And I will say that everything in here is a very tight fit. Um, especially with these new riffraff boots, they are snug, very, very snug. So it's kind of a pain taking things in and out and refitting, especially taking them in and out and not trying to scratch this beautiful powder coat. But that's an issue we ran into, and we think it was simply because the pusher intake system was built to run on a factory truck or a stock truck. And so they didn't account for the little bit, like an eighth of an inch of the plenum inserts, sticking up above the plenum, raising the Y pipe ever so slightly. And I mean, it's small. It's about an eighth of an inch, maybe a sixteenth of an inch clearance between the two pipes. And so that was an issue we ran into. Nothing major, but something I think you guys should be aware of. Um, what other issues did we run into? Um, it was a pain to get the turbo in place, uh, but that's not really an uncommon thing. It sits... W the turbo sits one specific way and it takes a lot of fiddling and jiggling and moving it around to get it to finally drop into that exact place where the dowel pin on the back seats. Other than that though, I think it was basically problem free. Um, it was just taking our time and figuring it out. Like I said, I didn't do the catch can yet. 
Um, it was a long day. I didn't feel like trying to problem solve and troubleshoot that at the same time. So you can kind of see, I showed it, but you can kind of see the tube back there coming from the crankcase vet down underneath the truck. Just kind of the standard CCV mod. We got the boost fooler back there, the riffraff boost fooler. Let me zoom in on it. Riffraff boost fooler back there just replaces the standard lines to the map sensor. I'll probably shorten up that line here at some point, uh, just make it a little more of a direct fit. But that seems to be working great. Stops the boost at just about 23 PSI. The truck doesn't see anything above that. These are all the plugs that I ended up adding. Not that one, that's factory. But we got the brass plug to the map sensor. This one with the red, black, and yellow wire is the new boost sensor. And then we have the factory sensor there for intake temperatures. And then down at the bottom, you're not really going to be able to see it, is where these red and green lines attach to um, for the factory wastegate controller, which is plugged in right back there, which you can kind of see. But yeah, I think that's basically it. Let me know what you guys think about it. I think it turned out pretty darn clean. Um, I'm happy with it. You open the hood and it's like, wow, this guy's put in, some, or at least my goal is when you open the hood and you see it, you're like, wow, this guy's put in some effort into his truck and it looks clean. Um, by no means is it a show truck. It is very far from a show truck, uh, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. Let me know what you guys think about it. So now, without more talking, I think it's time to hop back in the truck and take her for a spin. So, of course, i got to give you guys another startup clip just because it's too fun not to. I don't have my tripod right now, so you guys are getting set on the ground. Don't get too offended. So as we're letting the truck warm up a little bit, I'll explain what we're doing again. Basically, we're going to be doing some 0 to 60 testing, and then we're going to be doing a max boost testing. So I have done max boost testing, so I have a pretty good idea of what it's going to sit at. I'm guessing it'll be around 31 to 32 PSI um, if we get the right circumstances. And then as far as 0 to 60 testing goes, I haven't done that yet. I have no idea whether it'll be faster or slower. You'd think it'd be a little bit faster. Uh, maybe it would be a lot faster. Honestly, I have no idea. So we're going to be finding that out together. Um, like I said, I have been doing a week of driving on it so far. And overall, I'm pretty darn happy with it. I would say by no means is it like put the turbo in and the truck is a whole nother animal. Um, to be completely honest, under 2,000 RPMs, it feels almost the exact same. You can definitely hear it more. Uh, you can hear the turbo more for sure. But as far as like power goes, it feels like it's the same truck. Um, it's once you get over 2,000 RPMs is when you can really start to tell the difference in the turbo. And no, it's not like, holy smokes, this thing's a race truck now. Uh, by no means is it a race truck. Uh, but you can definitely feel the little bit of a, a harder pull. It pulls you into your seat a little bit more. And again, it, I mean, it's hard to try to explain the feeling of what it feels like. Uh, so you guys are going to have to take my word for it. But overall, it seems to be doing really well. Now, as far as gas mileage increase goes, um, I've seen some people say that they got anywhere from one to two PS or one to two miles per gallon better. I'm gonna say on this tank, I'm not gonna notice a difference. It might be worse because I've been romping around a little, playing it a little bit more. Um, of course, and with all this testing, I'm just feeling the crap out of it. So I haven't noticed a difference yet. Um, on my next full tank, I'm going to try to drive a little more normally. We'll see how that goes um and see if it makes a difference then um quick refresh on the numbers we had before i believe it was we are maxing out at 25 psi which is what the truck was limiting it to and then as far as zero to 60 times i think we were right around seven seconds and hitting um, about a thousand to 1100 egts i think is what it was so we're gonna see if we can beat those numbers better or worse we're gonna find out um, I'm going to switch you guys over to the GoPro, of course, the audio and video quality is not going to be as good, um, but it is what it is. I can't drive with hand controls and film, so you guys are getting stuck to the window on the GoPro. Alright, so you guys are on the GoPro now, you should be able to see alright. Again, we have our EGTs up here, top middle, we have our boost numbers right down below it with our new sensor. I'm not going to show you the map sensor or the factory sensor, that'll be cutting out at 23 psi no matter what. Um, with the boost wheeler so that it is what it is and then of course i'll switch the screens over to the uh, testing for 060 and we'll take a look at that 
so let's go for a drive. We're in the same spot, same straightaway. Let's go to the performance testing. Somebody come out behind us. zero to 60 and we'll see how she does I'm gonna to try to launch it about the same way as I did before um, not crazy hard right around 1500 rpms and we'll see how she does safe to say that we're looking at around 6.3 to 6.5 seconds as opposed to about 7 seconds what we had on the stock turbo. So half a second difference is a pretty good difference when we're talking 0 to 60 times. Especially when we're on a 7,700 pound truck. I think that's a pretty respectable time, six and a half seconds. All right, so again, we got our boost, EGTs. Do one more run for you guys and call her good. We're almost out of gas too. guys filling up at the gas station i think this is going to be a wrap on today's video um, let me know what you guys think about the turbo install i know i didn't go into too terribly much detail but i wasn't planning on to hopefully it was just something you guys enjoyed watching the project um, i think the results turned out pretty darn good let me know what you guys think about the powder coat color choice and what all how it looks under the hood um, i'm pretty happy with it of course i'm sitting here with a camera we're talking to a camera in front of a bunch of people giving me some weird looks uh, youtubers life um yeah let me know what you guys think if you guys have any questions let me down below or let me know down below as far as performance goes i'm pretty darn happy with it it's not anything huge by any means but i mean like half a second in zero to 60 time that's i'd say that's a pretty substantial difference or at least i think it is um any of you guys that are more of racers um, let me know i feel like it's a pretty substantial difference um yeah if you guys like the video as always leave it a thumbs up any questions leave them down below um and make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not already. We got a lot of fun stuff. Hopefully a new truck coming sometime in the near future, which means some more projects. Don't worry, the 7.3 is not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, just need some more fun stuff to work on. So thank you all for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next video.